As a family that cruises on a pretty regular basis, we've learned over time how important it is to make smart decisions while traveling. Although we have encountered lots of fantastic people everywhere we've gone, we know that there's always a chance we could run into someone that has bad intentions and will try to take advantage of us and put a damper on our family vacation. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Sharon at Sea Travel. Most of our family travel involves going on cruises, but even though we may feel pretty safe on the cruise ship, we still have to travel to and from the cruise port, and we still love to go out and explore the different places our ship stops at during our cruise. Safety awareness should always be a top priority when you travel, and today I'm gonna to share a number of things you can do to minimize your risk and maximize your fun the next time you're traveling. First, let's just talk about something as simple as being aware of your surroundings. When visiting a new place, you can get caught up in the sights and sounds around you and get lost in the moment. But try to remember these simple things. Lose the earbuds. So many people, especially the kids, walk around with earbuds, often listening to music. Take those earbuds out when you're sightseeing. You always want to hear what's going on around you, and if you're busy rocking out, you may lose your focus and miss hearing important things like vehicles approaching and directions and communication from others in your group. Pay attention to where you are. Take note of the street signs, building names, and visual identifiers in case you get lost and need a point of reference. Also, use Google Maps with preloaded addresses of destinations. This was a lifesaver for us in Europe. And if you need to ask for directions, try to go into a building or local business to ask instead of asking a stranger on the street. The person in the fixed location is less likely to steer you in the wrong direction. Make sure you have your travel insurance information with you in the event you have an accident or injury while out exploring and that more than one person in your group knows what to do in the event of an emergency. And if you're on a cruise, make sure you know how to contact the ship if you need to. The cruise line will supply important phone numbers to know while you're in port. Of course, if something doesn't feel right, go with your gut and head the other way. Dark alleys, unsavory groups of people, an unknown shortcut. Don't take any unnecessary risks when it comes to the safety of yourself and your family. Traveling where there might be a language barrier, be prepared with Google Translate or at least a few phrases that can help you get where you need to go. Carry a business card for your hotel to make sure a taxi or Uber driver knows where they're heading so there is no confusion. Speaking of ride chairs, here are a few things to remember. Always keep your personal bags on your lap. You know, the ones with the money and your travel documents in it. Don't let that bag out of your sight. Also, do not fully exit the vehicle before your driver does. Take that time to do a quick search inside for anything that got left behind, like purses or phones. Also, always watch all your bags get loaded and check that everything got unloaded to make sure nothing gets forgotten. Quick story for you guys. One of the first cruises many years ago that we took, we all hopped into a taxi while the bags were being loaded by the driver. We left the Port of Miami cruise port and went to the Fort Lauderdale airport, which is like 40 minutes away. When we got there, we realized that one bag was missing and it was the one that had our cameras and souvenirs from the cruise. Luckily, it was not an early flight. So I went back to the Miami cruise port, went into the cruise line office and thank God our bag was there in the lost and found with nothing missing. It was our first and last bag we ever lost track of. Also, don't take a ride from an Uber or Lyft driver that is off the clock. You have no repercussions if anything bad happens during that drive and it is the equivalent of getting a ride from a stranger with a sticker on their vehicle. We like Uber or Lyft because you can verify the vehicle, the license plate, and the driver when they arrive to make sure it's the right person. Finally, don't take the ride if it appears the driver is a friend of the driver. You know, just someone covering his or her shift. This is rare, but it can happen. Now, let's talk about cell phones. We all have them. We all carry them everywhere, including on our vacation. Our cell phones carry every bit of our private information on them, and the bad guys know this. So here are a few things you can do to secure the information on your phone. Make sure you have your lock screen set up. Sounds simple, but many people don't do this because it's an inconvenience to log in every time you want to use your cell phone. A lock screen is the first line of defense if your phone is lost or stolen. Use an RFID blocking bag, purse, or case for your phone. That'll keep the bad guys from getting close and connecting to your phone and stealing information. And if you're in a crowded place and you need to log into a secure site on your phone, make sure to step away from the crowd before logging in. Many phones will have built-in software or you can download an app that will help find your phone if it's lost. Make sure everyone in your party is linked up together so if a phone is misplaced, it can be easily found. Also, make sure someone or everyone in your group has an extra battery pack to recharge your phone in the event you need it and your power is low. If you only have your phone with you for your photos and videos, put it into airplane mode when you're off the ship so you can save battery life. 
Finally, many places will have public Wi-Fi access. This can be great to use your phone in an area where you don't have normal cell service, but make sure to be brief and log out of the Wi-Fi when done in case there's someone trying to access your phone through that public Wi-Fi. Next up, wallets, purses, and backpacks. These are the places where you keep your cash, credit cards, laptops, tablets, and many other valuables. So let's talk about a few things you can do to be as secure as possible. Wallets, use an RFID blocking wallet to secure your credit cards. Also keep some smaller bills in the main area of your wallet and keep the big bills folded up and tucked away into pockets or sleeves in your wallet. So if God forbid you're the victim of a theft, maybe they'll just take what's visible and not go digging around. As for purses, avoid carrying a large purse, especially a designer bag. You're just asking to be a victim of a grab and run and that is not fun. Try using a smaller single strap bag or fanny pack that you wear around your neck and over one shoulder so the bag sits in front of your body where it's much more secure. If you're using a backpack, make sure to use both the straps over your shoulders to avoid grab and runs. Don't walk in the back of your group if traveling in numbers and make sure your group pays attention to each other in congested areas to ensure no one tries to open or access your backpack in a crowd. Also, and this may be obvious, but don't flash cash in public, and in the event you need an ATM, make sure it's a bank ATM and not just a random one on a street corner. Finally, if a wallet, purse, or bag goes missing, so does your identification, and that is not good. Think about saving a printout or have an emailed image that you can access just in case, and the same goes for your passport information as well. How about hotels and restaurants? If you travel to an unfamiliar area, use a reliable established hotel chain so in the event of any issues, you have real methods of recourse to get things resolved. In your hotel room, keep valuables out of view from the hallway if your door is open. This will help avoid any crimes of opportunity if a bad guy passes by and sees you in your room. When you leave your hotel room, keep the TV on and put the do not disturb sign on the door so no one really knows if you're in there or not. When in the room, make sure to use whatever extra locking mechanism is on the door for added security. If traveling alone, close the door all the way when you go to the vending area for snacks or ice so you don't have any uninvited guests in your room when you return. Restaurant and bar awareness is important as well. If you're at a bar, don't leave your drink unattended or at least ask a friend to keep an eye on it if you step away for a moment. If you take some food to go, ask for the box so you can refill it yourself. Avoid letting them take your food away to box it up in the back. Sometimes street vendors will have delicious options for food and drinks. Just steer clear of anything that looks old or unsanitary. Also, make sure you pay with cash or a credit card and not your debit card. Do not forget a copy of the receipt as well and don't leave the tip area of the receipt blank. We often use cash for tips instead of adding it to the bill. Bars and restaurants in tourist areas are great places for credit card theft since they know you may never return and if on vacation, it may be days until you realize there's been fraudulent activity. If you use your debit card, you may never get the money back, while credit cards always have protections built in just for those situations. Speaking of credit cards, make sure you carry more than one in case your card is compromised, you'll always have a backup. Also, make sure to adjust your daily spending limits on your debit card. Set the amount as low as you can, so if someone does access it and tries to use your debit card, it'll get declined. Make sure you have mobile notifications set up for your credit card so you get notified of unexpected transactions and set up travel notices if you can so they know you'll be using your card on the road and the bank doesn't shut down your card during a legitimate purchase. Wow, we just covered a ton of things to remember while traveling to minimize your risk and maximize your fun. I'd actually recommend watching this video back a number of times and taking a few notes and you should probably share it with everyone you know as well. They will definitely appreciate your concern for their travel safety. Also, you should probably subscribe to the channel. So if you forget your notes, you can easily find this video to rewatch it again. And if you're gonna subscribe, you might as well hit the like button and make sure notifications are on for when we put out more videos, right? I mean, it seems like the safe thing to do. Thanks so much for watching the video. I sure hope it really did provide you with some great travel tips and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.